Good morning, Pastor Larry here. It's Monday, August 24th. And uh, I actually want to read something for you this morning. Uh, this is a devotional. I've been going through this uh, devotional, The Chosen, and we're watching that and um, on Wednesdays. And uh, this devotional kind of goes along with it. And um, so I just want to share this with you, and uh, then we'll uh, uh, hopefully have a great day today, okay? Um, the title is Relationship, all right? And I'm going to read a passage, John chapter 2, verse 23 to 25 says, Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name when, he, when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men, and needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Then uh, I'm going to get ready for another passage, uh, Luke chapter 17. We're going to read that as well. Pardon me getting all this situated here, but from Adam's first breath, God has been watching every choice, every thought, every motive for every act. Can you imagine what he's seen? Sure, there have been moments of goodness, righteousness, and love. Many were recorded in the scriptures and rewarded by God. But the bad far outweighs the good. Look at today's headlines and multiply the negative by a gazillion. And you'll begin to grasp just how wretched and sinful the human race, in fact, is. Jesus was doing amazing things in Jerusalem, and the people were in awe. They followed him around and listened while he preached, no doubt motivated by the things they were seeing. In other words, as long as the people were experiencing miracles, they were willing to stay. But being in attendance, being in awe, being emotionally impacted, and even believing in the supernatural don't always result in a relationship with Christ. And the case in point is here in Luke chapter 17, verse 11 says this, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. The lepers called him Master, and begged for mercy. And Jesus, because he's merciful, obliged. He sent them to the priest, because according to the law, lepers had to be deemed clean in order to re-enter society. They obeyed and went, and along the way were miraculously healed. Which means, by the time they arrived at the synagogue, the priest did indeed pronounce them clean. After that, I'm guessing most of them ran home to their families and friends, then resumed their lives. Only one of the ten ran back to thank Jesus. Why? Jesus posed the same question, but it was rhetorical because he knew what was in that man. He'd been watching since the beginning. Far too often, people want the perks of a relationship with Jesus without the actual relationship. They take credit when things go well and offer up Hail Mary prayers when things go badly. They attend church, but only on holidays or when they feel like it. They want assurance of heaven while maintaining devotion to the world. They have a faith someday mentality. Quote, I'll go to Jesus when I'm older, when I'm done living life on my terms, end quote. But unfortunately, human terms are, well, sin-soaked. Jesus is looking for people who are willing to run to him, fall on their faces, to repent, surrender, and worship because of who he is and to learn and grow in faith that remains even when the miracles cease. Jesus knew what was in people's hearts. It's the reason he came. And so, true believers aren't just in it for the miracles. They have been fundamentally and irrevo ir ir irrevocably changed by Jesus himself, making relationship with him the ultimate prize. I found this very interesting today, and I hope that it's been a blessing to you. Have a great day. God bless and pursue a relationship with Christ.